Yeah. But one of the things that was really impressive for me was when you were doing your, we were doing our fireside chat and we were talking about being neurodivergent and the crowd seemed to be really focused on that. They were like feverish to understand. And it's like, I told you, I got diagnosed in April of this year. And as a result, it's just given me language for what I've known the whole year, the whole, my whole life that there's been an experience. Yeah. Um, but it seems to happen to more people than we realize and I feel like we haven't quite got to a point where the conversation is able to be had in a healthy, safe way. Yep. It's still a little yeah. bit, people are a little bit like dismissive. They conflate it with mental illness or they just think it's just people just making stuff up. Oh, yeah. So it's like, uh, how, how did you find talking about it in that particular space and platform? Because I, I assume you didn't plan, it wasn't the focal point of what we were talking about. Yeah, but, but people just had it. loads of questions. Yeah, how was that Which I you? appreciated. I actually, I'm so open to talking about it. I'm mm. the sort of person, some people get diagnosed with ADHD and then they make it their online brand. Mm. Like they make it like, you know, I am ADHD Sally or whatever. Like yeah. they really lean into it. But I, I wasn't comfortable with that, mm. particularly because my interests change every six weeks like yeah. you know one minute I'm like I really want to do a quiz the next minute I'm never doing that quiz again yeah. Yeah. so I'm like I'm not going to make this thing my brand because I'm not going to care about it in two weeks even though I'm going to have it forever yeah. but it's not going to be interesting as a as a as a uh, topic to discuss it continuously. Gimmicky, though, doesn't yeah. It? yeah, it does. It's like, and that's the problem I think people it's become like an attachment that people use almost like to popularize themselves, which yeah, a hundred percent. And I was like, okay, cool, but it's still something I want to talk about because mm. I still feel affected by it, and there's mm. a lot I want to get off my chest. And so I was doing a lot of freelancing at the time, so I wrote an article for Refinery Twenty Nine, which mm. was like my experience with ADHD as a Black woman. And for me, I was like, this is going to be not the only thing, but pretty much the only thing I'm going to say about this. And it's a very kind of thorough piece where I really get into what I was like growing up, what I was like in school, what my friendships and relationships were like, and then how I decided I was going to get um, diagnosed. And that piece was just like, sh I still get people sharing this piece to this day. I like, And it was piece. in 2020. I need to read, yeah, need to read that piece. <laughs> but it was like, sure. it was the best way for me to communicate it because mm. it's something that has a, will continue to live on and people still read and still share and still mm. reference. And I basically wrote that piece and that was it and if you know people had questions I would answer the questions if I was starting medication I would say on Instagram start medication but I tried to weave in weave it in as much as possible with what I'm doing regularly so it didn't feel like this was a whole new thing I was developing yeah. 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 Um, and so that made me feel really comfortable talking about it because I didn't treat it any differently to any other topic mm. what's really interesting because I had the similar type of experience so um, I, I basically was doing events went quiet for about eight years and then came out with Dope Black Dads. And Dope Black Dads was just about how I felt about being a man and a dad at a particular time. Then once I got diagnosed, I understood the reason why I felt that way about being a man and a dad at that time is because of ADHD. Mm. So inherently, I feel like I wish the ADHD diagnosis came before that. Mm -hmm. then, to be fair, it wouldn't exist, I don't feel. I think I would have just understood and gone on a different journey with understanding what that means. But you're right, in terms of like creating a, a sort of this idea of collecting badges where it's like I'm a dad man and I'm a challenged person so I'm challenging those things and then it's like ADHD and it's like you start realising that you become almost like not a real person yes. and it does feel quite gimmicky it feels like you're just on this thing of like bandwagoning but to be honest in my discovery it was like I was quite astounded that yeah. I got to 39 mm. before I had been diagnosed yeah. like that's a long time to go where mm. no one was just like hey have you yeah. ever thought about and it was only because someone in Dope Black Queers, and I will forever love Talia for just pointing me into the right direction. She was like, have you ever just thought about, have you ever considered it? Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> I had to Google it and yeah. be like, what actually is it? And then you know when you read the symptoms and you're like, that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe. Then you start going on TikTok and as soon as you put it into TikTok, yeah, right, exactly. you have it whether you know it or not. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the constant diagnosis and I the know. things that show up. I was like, wow, this is crazy. So I just came to the conclusion. Then I got a formal diagnosis and the guy was like, even in the fact that how late you were to this meeting, <laughs> through time blindness <laughs> probably tells me we'll do, we'll do it anyway and I was like right, <laughs> right. but like 
Because basically, like, the one thing that happens to me often, I'll have a meeting at five to four. Mm. And then I'll be like, I'll close the notification because it gets in the way of my interface. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Then it'll be 10 minutes past four. Always. Then I jump on this call and they're like, oh, we, we left that. I saw an email of that for you yesterday. Yes. There you go, see. So it happens all the time. Yeah. So I'm like, I have to learn to not beat myself up about it and be like, it's a thing that happens. Yeah. But what I realized is it used to infuriate people who did not understand. They were yeah. like, they were like, you don't respect my time. And mm. I'd be like, look, it's not even, but it just happens. It happens to whatever it is. Mostly things that I don't want to do. <laughs> 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 even more so, <laughs> but it just happens. So I think it's like, um, it's a real challenge when you're, when you're going, trying to go through it and figuring out how do I make it have a meaning to me without mm. overtaking my life yeah do, do you mind just telling us like when did you know or when did you think it was happening for you what part of your life it was happening so i got diagnosed in 2020 and so this is obviously peak pandemic but like i i um was in a job and it was the longest job i'd ever had and it was a year because i've i've never lost that long of a job because after two weeks i'm bored after three months i'm like get me the hell out of here <laughs> and i was just never that sort of person and i kind of always had a feeling it was like this. I remember in school, I used to, um, I didn't get bad grades, but I used to work like 27 times harder than my peers mm. and maybe just scrape what they were getting. Mm. And I used to, you know, be in the library for hours and hours a day, lots of caffeine tablets, energy drinks. I was very unkind to myself when I was young because mm. I believed that I was like slower than my peers or I wasn't intelligent or I wasn't working hard enough, mm. put a lot of pressure on myself. Um, and when I used to kind of, talk to like you know pastoral stuff about this and, you know I was in like counseling when I was very very young mm. as well I was like diagnosed with depression and they mm. put me on like sertraline and salopram and I was taking wow. off these pills and doing all stuff and I was like but this isn't really um this isn't helping me yeah mm. like you're telling me I'm depressed and they're giving me these tablets but I'm still experiencing the same things yeah, right. and so I eventually just stopped taking all of that stuff because I was like I don't think this is doing anything yeah. for me um, and it wasn't yeah until I got into work and I saw another black woman online talking about her ADHD diagnosis and it just felt so similar to what I've been going through yeah. mm. and so then I, I was like to my workplace like look guys you notice it I notice it we're both not having a good time here I was like right. guys I think it's ADHD and I was like the wait list on NHS is like very 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 long mm. like will you pay for my private diagnosis and they were like yeah of course obviously getting an ADHD diagnosis is the most unfriendly ADHD kind yeah. of process mm. lots of forms lots of yeah. emails lots yeah. of scheduling and it so is isn't it getting evidence make... mm. exactly and that stuff you know that just delayed <laughs> me more and more and more and more and more so like by this from when they approved it to when I actually you know went and sat down with the physician for that two hour meeting it was mm. a long time and when I got my diagnosis I was like boom okay time to quit my job and they were like what yeah. they, were like, they were like no 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 we could make it work and I was like I actually now that I have this information I need to start my life again from zero yeah. really? I was like I can't go on like this because I spent all this year all these years in like traditional workforces mm. that operate in a way that is like the complete antithesis to how I work yeah. mm. so I went through my whole working life feeling like I wasn't smart yeah. like I didn't know how to work I saw my peers you know go into banking jobs and consulting jobs mm. and get mm. promoted and I was just like floundering in all of these jobs I was doing and I was yeah. like okay everything needs to just end now and I quit mm. my job and I moved into my grandma's garage and I was like we start from zero and I, I obviously really appreciate them for still wanting to keep me on but I was like I need to develop systems and methods yeah. that make me feel good about myself and make me feel supportive and either find a workspace or create a workspace for myself in which I can thrive mm. because it's sometimes Yes, I believe all organizations and institutions can change or whatever, but sometimes it's just they're not yeah. capable of changing in a way that fits you. And mm. maybe in 20 years time when we are much more clued up about how workplaces can operate to support neurodivergent people, mm. sure. But for now, the environment mm. is not good. And I've worked so hard on myself in all of these years since leaving the workforce. And I just feel so much better about myself that I just, I don't know if I ever see myself going back mm. again. Well done, it's, it's you, fun, for yeah. sure. oh, On that point, it's so <laughs> interesting because I've got someone in my team who's ADHD mm. and I think 
I have to individually manage them. And I just mm. don't think corporations, like it, it, it's not, it's almost like not a corporation. It's like an individual thing. You have yeah. to really understand that person. You have to really empathize. Correct. And it takes a whole rethinking of the work structure, mm. what they go through, when they might work, how they'll deliver work. Yeah. It's like you almost have to completely rip it up and just go, mm. okay, how are we going to work together and yeah. what's best for you? And I just don't think corporations well, are ready for that. So it's, can I just ask, yeah. do you, because you're individually managing this individual, mm. Do you find that you're getting better results out of them? Absolutely. I mean, the relationship we have is fantastic. Yeah. But it's because I fully understand the way they work and we're completely honest. And they've actually said to me, I've never been this honest before, you know, and we mm. can. And when they're having moments where they're completely overwhelmed mm. and they have to have a day, I'm like, you're going to have to have a day where you just need to sit with that mm. and, and, and you need to feel that and don't worry about it tomorrow you are going to smash 10 pieces out in an hour. You know, like mm. that is how, yeah. that's how their brain works. And they're like, thank you so much. And that's how our relationship, but it, it is a rethinking because it's like, you can't be like, you need to be in at this time and you need to yeah. deliver yeah, this at this time and sure. everything needs to be da, da, da. Um, Do you yeah. know what? It's so interesting. I'm, I'm so glad people like you exist because I know in the corporate space, even if they acknowledge that you do, you are neurodivergent or whatnot, they, you know, they, in HR or your your line managers, they may know that, but they may not release that information to the rest of your team. Yeah. So like mm. you said earlier, you know, some people don't understand why you do things. Mm. And so they'll use that against you. So yes. all of a sudden now you are like the, you know, the, the I don't know, the... How? Difficult one. The difficult yeah. one in the in in the in and the then department. I'd be in black on top of that. Hey, yeah, exactly. I said exactly. I'm not gonna let you people bully yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. instead of it being a part of your inclusivity and inclusion, it's mm. actually you feel more separated from the yeah. department. Yeah. And I definitely felt like that within like and my vulnerable. I imagine. Oh, for sure. Yeah, which is not good. Definitely. Yeah. And it, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm realizing why I've been sacked from so many jobs. What's happening for you? It's true. It's true. It's basically it took me a while, but I was getting sacked from all these jobs and then I was like yeah it must be me you know mm. and then one day I was like cool from now on I'm going to be myself in these jobs yeah. and yeah. That, and then what I started having to do was like because I can read people's body language and mm. that a, a lot better than most people can mm. yeah. and that's how I would just tailor my personality in that space where no one could bully me mm. Mm. so then I'd start getting left alone. Mm. And then I would just do the job and they realize, oh, this guy's actually really good at the job. Yeah. So, yeah. And, yeah. and that's what it's I would hard, have though, to isn't do. It? Yeah. That feeling yeah. that you have to just be alone and almost, it's, it's so tough. But yeah. my, my, my thing is, yeah, is that I always tell people, even if, you're, if you realize you're having a different experience to what you think you should be having, mm. it's an area just to go and ask. Yeah, for because sure. inherently, when you find out, it takes the mental sh pressure off you to adapt to all these environments. Because yeah. yeah. if you try to measure yourself against anything normal, you will find that you are under indexing. Yeah. And then you now feel like you're failing. So now you're just under pressure. Yeah. I've got to do yeah. this. Why haven't I done this? Yeah. I should be better at this. Yeah. But when you start to understand that there's a fundamental reason and you accept. So I had a similar moment. So my career, I got I never made it past a probation. So I worked at all these big companies and for maybe seven years, didn't make it past probation. Worked for myself for three to four years, was in music and doing different things. Then I was like, I've had enough. Yeah. Then I went back into the work, did two more jobs, got fired. To the point that if you put a calendar invite in my diary on a Friday at four, mm -hmm. I just have tremors. I wow. get, I'm getting anxiety because I feel mm -hmm. like I'm getting fired. Mm. And I'm that's sick of so, getting fired. I mean, that's crazy. And you're such an exceptional person. Right. No, so, so, so that's that's right. Right. It's, it's always high performance. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's just crazy. So, so and that by, anxiety is real. Yeah. It's so real. You so know the, I, outlook, like, the outlook chime? Mm. I had to switch that off. Yeah. Mm. Like that. Like I have nightmares about the outlook chime. Just the wow. sound of it. Yeah. So, so what's really interesting <laughs> is by the time I... The, I think I got a job that I just really liked. It started off, I think it was uh, Manchester City, Samsung into WPP. So that run was, I just said, it. Mm. Like, I'm just going to enjoy this. And if it doesn't work, I don't really care. But mm. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm tired of going there and trying to read and understand the situation. This is why you get so good at assessing people because you're yes. scanning yes. For, yes. For, for sense and for patterns. Mm. Yes. But then the problem is, is that people operate in the gray all the time. Yeah. So you learn people, but then you're almost like, so the pattern is basically, 
oh, you, oh, so then everyone just lies about stuff. Like, yeah. whereas I'm quite oh, comfortable with the truth. I don't have yeah. a reason to lie. Yeah. But when you tell people that you don't lie, they believe that you're lying. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a weird thing where you're just like, no, I'm just telling you, this is what I am comfortable doing. This mm. is what I think. This is what I'm not doing. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's a trick. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you're doing this so that you think I'm doing... So it comes into a massive game. Mm. And I think you destabilize people with your consistency yeah. and your like freedom. Yeah. So that becomes anyway a whole experience. But when I put my push my fucking button at work, mm. my career just went like this. Yeah. It just went so, so quick to the point I was a bit like, this is overwhelming. Mm, like right. I grew so much and I ended up running a global team and strategy. And I was like, I'm burning out. Mm. If I get on one more plane, and one more pitch, I'm not going to make it. So no. I tried to quit and be like, I'm leaving. And they were like, you ain't leaving. Like, <laughs> yeah, real talk. I was like, no, nah, it was like yeah. January and I quit. And then I had a three month notice. I had to wait till Feb, I mean to March. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to take a break. And so they were like, it's fine. Just keep working around. You yeah. stick around as long as you want. If you want to come back, you just text us. And then obviously I, I, my last day was a Friday. And then on Monday, Boris was just like, everyone stay at home. Mm. So it literally happened like that. So I sat at home for two months, twiddling my phone. Like, this is going to be fine. Then I got bored. Yeah. I was like, I would, I wish I was on a Zoom meeting right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I realized that like I had to get back into work and then from August when I started Beloved August 2020 to the end of the year, I worked 17 hour days, seven days a week Damn. launching this company. So it went straight into a hyper focus. So I got two and a half months off, but I then went straight back into the bold, uh, my old habits for my own company. Yeah. But it's different when you do it for yourself. The yeah. fact that I can work 17 well, hours for myself, thing, yeah. I can't do that for anybody else. No, so it, it is very, very difficult. So it's great to hear that story. And I hope people are listening and realize if they find that disconnect, that they just go and investigate like yeah, what it is. Sure. Are there any other key things that you think people should know and take away and be like, look, just be aware of some things. These are some, some traits, some behaviors that you might yeah. be aware of. Um, I would say that the biggest thing for me when it comes to ADHD and how it affects me personally has definitely been in my kind of interpersonal relationships. Mm. Mm. I think that has stood out. I mean, yes, obviously work is a huge place, but also that fear of rejection, how you deal with rejection, very mm. difficult. You know, when you grow up receiving so many negative messages about yourself because you have this thing and you don't know that you have it, you kind of just start to see yourself as inherently a bad person. Mm. And so then when you believe that your whole life you grow up and you kind of not that it's a chip on your shoulder but you're very wounded yeah. so like you mm. said scanning recognizing patterns mm. being hyper aware of your environment mm. you are trying to make sure you know everything about everyone and everywhere you're at so you can avoid any sort of negative interactions or feelings because yeah. when you're wounded like that yeah. it sticks with you and it applies to kind of every area of life both work and interpersonal so that was a big thing when we did the event loads of people were very um there were loads of questions about medication. Mm. And I know, particularly in the black community, I know that yeah. this is yeah. a thing. Mm. Um, and I would kind of say to people, there is no one drug that is a one trick pony. There are different types of ADHD medication. There are, you know, stimulant, stimulants. Some can be more addictive than others. There are non-stimulants. Or you can not go down that route. Like I, I have been on, I am and have been on medication, but I've also been in therapy for many years. I've had ADHD coaching. Like I've kind of explored every single option available to me and so mm. i would implore people not to feel pressured to go down the medication route but if they do just know that there's a lot of options for you and that you're not going to get it the first time and you'll have to you know go up in a drug to see how much you can deal with and how much you the minimum dose you can have mm. so it, like people tend to think oh oh you say i have adhd to your gp and they just throw some adderall at you and that's right. the end of it like it's a long process so mentally prepare yourself for that if mm. you want to go down the official route and if you can't or you don't however you feel about yourself is valid. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people doubt it, but I think self-diagnosis is just as valid. Yeah. Um, if you're just developing systems and habits that work for you and support your brain and your mind, mm. then do it. Like it's not costing you anything if you believe you have this and you mm. organize your life in a way that supports you. But um, yeah, all, all formats are valid and just pursue it and don't be afraid. Basically. Are there any natural, um, natural medication that you could 
that you know that you could use for your ADHD? I mean, well, this is the thing. I was talking to a a a scientist who is also has ADHD and has an is an ADHD and coach and runs an ADHD Kendra. podcast. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a huge herbalist. So well, this for me, I'm like, I love that. No real talk. I yeah. am. So. I, I don't want to. I don't want to like be like <laughs> everyone buy this thing. Yeah. But like yeah. one thing I would say is that I am also very much in yeah. in my that bag. Yeah. If you go on Reddit, there's there's R dash nootropics and nootropics are basically like supplements and like things that people kind of put together to help with brain health and yeah. it's mm. it's like natural ADHD remedies like you know some people are really big into it yeah. others aren't you know if you go on on, on Amazon there's one called uh, Focus that's really good oh, yeah. Mind Lab is a good one mm -hmm. uh, Brain Food is another good one so mm. there are loads of brands that do these kind of nootropic mm. products that are supposed to be really good with like helping your brain function paying attention yeah. staying alert and um, micro dosing on yeah micro dosing is a huge thing mm. obviously yeah. all of the mushroom brands that are coming out now yeah. that are like i'm i'm very into that i'm yeah, i'm deep in my wellness mm. bag yeah. so i'm like very much into all that stuff but it's, it's each of their own mm. pardon are you doing shrooms <laughs> no, no no they're like they're mushroom powders mm. they're not yeah, like the hallucinogens yeah, they're like you know cordyceps and stuff like yeah. that and tremella and stuff mm. um but yeah i've been interested in that is it good yeah i've been interested to know if they yeah. There's like a brand called Dirty. Mm. Really? Do you know what? I was on their page okay. like this week. Sorry, I'm, really so intense. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> I was on their page this week. Yeah. And people was like, why are you saying it doesn't have sugar in it? They was like picking out all the negatives of Dirty. Yeah, yeah. It was like, well, it has coconut sugar. So it is. And I was just like, oh my God. People oh, are doing too much. But their coffee, like, obviously, if you're on ADHD medication, mm. you shouldn't have coffee. You shouldn't drink alcohol. Blah, blah. Yeah. But a really? Dirty have their yeah. own brand of like mushroom coffee. And everyone's always like, what is wrong with you? But I'm like, it is so mm. good. Mushroom and coffee. does it still give you the kick the coffee this. gives you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's not as I could strong. do with removing See, been, coffee been, from been, my I've life because I know it's negative. Because yeah. when I drink coffee, um, mm. I get tremors. Yeah. And Me too, um, actually. if I drink too much, mm. Afterwards, I start getting depressed and yeah. having suicidal thoughts. The calm thoughts. down. So, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it is. It, yeah, people don't realise how bad coffee can yeah, be. But then you kind of, well, I feel like I need it. I feel like it's like, Gives me energy and keeps me going. Mm. What about yeah. matcha? Have you tried matcha? It's actually stronger than coffee. Really? Yeah, matcha yeah. gives like makes matcha. me. Mm, I yeah. can't have too much of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I like matcha when I've got company. Yeah. Oh. All right. Okay. So, the term neurodivergent yeah. describes people whose brain differences <laughs> affect how their brain works. That means they have different strengths and challenges from people whose brains don't have those differences. The possible differences include medical disorders, learning disabilities, and other conditions. Mm. The possible strengths include better memory, including things like visualizing 3D objects, for example, the ability to solve complex mathematical equations. Do you have that kind of pattern recognition thing? Yes. I, I have that. I, well. I, yeah, I was, to be fair, I was quite good at maths in school mm. uh, but it was like in only in certain circumstances well, I think for me pressure like mm. I like when everyone's freaking out about something I yeah. am like clear as day yeah, like, and that's yeah. the one thing like I'm like god bless ADHD because yeah. in a crisis I'm like yeah, I'm come the on. girl <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm the girl you know I, it's I'm a simple task I can't do um, sorry thinking of Rain Man yeah so he's yeah. also on the spectrum yeah, that's, so a, that's a different and that was the only time growing up that you saw someone like that having something that actually benefited mm. um mm. like that had had benefits to to this sort of behavior cuz growing up it was just always frowned upon you was called yeah. dunce you was called this that mm. and the other right and like, yeah can i ask a question actually so when you finally did get diagnosed both of you how did your family members take that mm. well my my dad then got diagnosed with ADHD because That's obviously it's, it's like her, it's like um yeah. you inherit it mm. like from and I and when I was going through the process and reading it I was like this is my dad mm. I was like this is my dad and I know my dad really really struggled in school like he's really successful now doing so amazing for himself and like we are we are best friends that's mm. probably why like but it's like he struggled so much in school he struggled so much in education in work sometimes he really struggled he's a freelancer too as well mm. like and he's just like killing it for himself now but it was like for him he got diagnosed at 46 so it's like, incredible that he did that though amazing. yeah literally yeah. as soon as I got my diagnosis I was like yeah dad I got something yeah. to tell you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he went he got his um my mom was very much like she kind of gave me what i think a lot of people get oh you know you you did fine in school like how could you have adhd when da, da, da. but i was like a lot of that stuff was kind of masking mm. and like the amount of work and effort that i used to put in how yeah. kind of unkind i was to myself like yes i got the grades and yes i made the achievements but it was like 
it's the struggle to get to that place in the mm. like initially. Mm. Uh, that's what really drew me to get my um diagnosis. Mm. Um, and you, and I, I want to ask you about the therapy because I think therapy is interesting. As in, did they pick it up? when you were going through therapy before you got your diagnosis at any point, or did you not have therapy until you got your diagnosis? I've ha I've been in like some form of counseling since I was like, maybe like 13. Mm. And I never, mm. they, I never got picked up. They just told me I was mm. depressed. And I was like, I don't exactly. think I'm yeah. depressed. Yeah. Like, I don't think I'm depressed. Yeah. I was like, it's something, but I'm not depressed. Yeah. Um, And it, it wasn't until I kind of, yeah, when I was in work and after I'd graduated and I was like, bro, I'd how do people get on a train and go to a job every day at 9am? Yeah. This is the <laughs> hardest period yeah. of my life. Like, yeah. can, I, can I just call out what some of the actual um, uh, diagnoses are? So the different type of conditions you have. So autism spectrum disorder, which used to be called Asperger's, uh, ADHD, uh, dyscalculia, which mm. is difficulty with math, uh, dysgraphia, which is difficulty with writing, dyslexia, difficulty with reading, uh, dyspraxia, which is difficult with uh, coordination. There's intellectual disabilities, there's mental health disorders, which are slightly different as well. So I think mm. there's now a conversation about do you make neurodivergent people are part of the disability conversation because yeah. it is a fundamental difference in where like a hidden disability mm. uh there's sensory processing disorders there's prada willy mm. sy syndrome uh social anxiety which is now part of it uh tourette's and williams syndrome so there and the things like ocd are also considered a part of it as well yeah, yeah. so it's a very broad conversation and they really exist on their own as well yeah, yeah. yeah. most people who have adhd have adhd and yeah. something, something else. Or, do you know what I mean? the other thing yeah. is I, I can see how if your adhd is under treated how it can become a mental health problem absolutely because it's yeah. such constant disconnection with yeah. yourself mm. for so long it happens so so many different mm. ways mm. that it would leave you in a place of depression if it's untreated yeah.